I don't know if there's someone here who came tonight with an expectation. Is there something burning in your heart that you're looking forward to tonight? Is there a glorious end that you are excited about tonight? Is there something that you have waited long enough for God to do? And you know that today is the day of your celebration. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if you came here with an expectation. I don't know if you came here with a hope in your heart. If you didn't, you are in the right place because I came to encourage you this evening. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you quickly about the power of expectation. The power of expectation. Without expectation, you make the power of God. You render the power of God useless. Bible says in Genesis 1, it says that, you know, um, the earth was void. It was empty. It was dark. Darkness filled the earth. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering. Then God said, he said, let there be light. Hallelujah. Bible says that, and there was light. The word that God spoke, the Holy Ghost needed to walk on that word. The Holy Ghost needed to walk on the desire of God to produce light. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit needs to walk on your desires tonight to deliver to your hands that which you desire. Amen. Hallelujah. Your expectations are God's raw materials to bring to pass your desires tonight. And I want to run you through uh, a story in the Bible. We're different stories in the Bible about people who receive their healings, receive their heart desires from Jesus. In John 5, the Bible speaks about a man who was at the pool of Bethesda. The guy was just there, he was chilling, he was ill. And the Bible says that Jesus reached out to him and he was healed. That was one person. The Bible says Jesus reached out to him and he received his healing. That was one person. There was another person called Bartimaeus. In Mark 10, 46, I'm going to read. The Bible says a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, hallelujah, somebody heard that wine press 2024, Jesus will be here, and that's why you came. And I declare in the name of Jesus that the reason why you came will enter into your hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He says he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, and he began to shout. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the scripture says that a lot of people around him told him, be quiet, be quiet. But Bible told us that as they tried to quiet in him, he screamed the more, hallelujah. As they tried to tell him that you will not get healed, he says, no, I believe the word of the Lord. I will receive my healing tonight. Hallelujah. Bible says he screamed the more. Then Jesus heard him. Your expectation will catch the attention of Jesus. I'm not praying. I'm telling you something. Your expectation. How eager are you tonight to receive from God? How enthusiastic are you to receive tonight from God? He says, the man screamed until Jesus heard him. He says, when Jesus heard him, Jesus stopped and said, tell him to come. It says, so they called the blind man, and they said to him, cheer up. Come on, he is calling you. The Bible says that Ambathemius threw off his coat. You know what? We have the tendency sometimes when we read the scriptures to skip things. The Bible says he threw off his coat. There was something particular about that coat. In those, in those days, in that city, what happened was the government always gave the, the, the sick people, uh, uh, beggars on the road, they gave them a jacket that caused them to be identified as legal beggars. He was a legal and official beggar. Is there somebody here that because of your limitation, because of your disease, they've named you the name that Jesus did not give you? I declare in the name of Jesus, if there's anyone here who people have called you by your limitation, who people have called you by your weakness, who people have called you by your disease, I declare in the name of Jesus, when you go back home today, you will shock them in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. It says that he threw off his coat and he jumped up. You could see he was enthusiastic. You could see he was excited. He said in his mind, he said, I've come today. Jesus is here. There's no way I'm going back the same. Jesus is here. There's no way I'm going back the same. Hallelujah. And scripture says that when Jesus saw him, what did Jesus do? Jesus gave him a blank check. Tonight you are in an atmosphere where anything can happen. You've come face to face to an opportunity of a lifetime. What are you going to do with it? Jesus gave him a blank check. He asked him, he said, what do you want? And tonight I'm asking you that same question. Are you clear about your desire? Are you crystal clear? Are you specific about what you want? Because when Jesus asked this man, what do you want? The guy said, I want to see. He didn't tell Jesus stories of his generation's past. He didn't say, Jesus, well, what really happened is that my father's grandfather's father had this issue. And I also have it. And you know, I've been praying for a long time, but you didn't hear me. He forgot the past. Hallelujah. He didn't allow his limitation, limit his belief in Jesus. He says, Lord, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, because your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. That's the second person. The first person, Jesus reached out to him. The second person, his expectations caught the attention of Jesus. In another scripture, in Romans 8, it talks about the centurion. The man, the centurion. That one, Jesus, you know, Jesus was walking and he said, Oh, Lord, my servant is dying. You know, you need to come and save. And Jesus said, Okay, I'll come. But he said to God, he said, no, I'm a man under authority. I understand who you are. I don't only understand who you are. I understand who I am in you. He said, Lord, just one word. He said, speak a word only. Tonight as you've come here, there will be words. Words will be communicated. And even before pastor comes this evening, the choir will be here ministering. Pastors will be here giving you instructions. Don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus because one word is enough to change your whole generation. Hallelujah. It says, speak the word only. Hallelujah. And then there was another person, Jarius, in Mark 5. Scripture says that his daughter was ill and she was at the verge of dying. And he went to Jesus and said, Lord, heal my daughter. And Jesus said, okay, let's go. They were going. As they were going, there was this woman. Somebody say a woman. Someone say a woman. Hallelujah. Bible says that she was ill. Hemorrhaging for 12 years. Bible says she has seen doctors over and over. But nothing got better. Bible says she was well spent. But she didn't get better. Amen. It says... When she heard of Jesus, he says she came in the press. I'm reading from verse 25, Mark 5, 27. She said, the Bible says she came in the press. You have to understand that this woman's disease made her ostracized in society. She couldn't come out in the culture of the Jews. She was unclean. So anyone she touched became unclean. So it was an abomination for her to come out. But she said, Jesus is around. I have to come out. Jesus is around. I have to do what I have to do to get my healing. Hallelujah. Bible says she came in from the press. You have to understand that she could not walk because the Bible says for 12 years she would have been weak, losing blood. She was crawling. Oh, my God. Are you here tonight? You are sick and tired of your current state. They've told you that your disease is terminal. You can never get better. But tonight I come to tell you that with God all things are possible. And if you decide in your heart that tonight uh, I'm going back not the same. Ah, you will not go back the same. It says that she pressed from behind. You don't understand. This one, Jesus was not about her business. Jesus was going elsewhere. She wasn't in focus. But there's something we say, she grabbed Jesus from behind. He didn't even see her. 
She knew how to catalambano, to take by force what was hers. Hallelujah. She said, the Bible says she grabbed Jesus from behind. It says, for she said, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. What are you thinking tonight? At what point do you think your deliverance, your healing, your direction, wisdom will come to you tonight? Have you decided that even as they worship, as the word comes forth, I will not wait. I will take my portion. Hallelujah. It was so bad that Jesus didn't see this woman. But when she drew from him, Jesus knew that something had left him. That's how her expectations were high. Jesus knew that virtue had left him. And he turned back and said, who is that? His disciples said, Jesus, are you okay? What do you mean? Uh -uh. See people thronging you. There are millions of people around you and you're asking who touched me. And the woman trembling came to Jesus and Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. I declare in the name of Jesus that tonight you will have the end of your expectation. In the name of Jesus. So what must you do? What must you do? I want you to determine in your heart what you want exactly. What do you want? Jesus said, what can I do for you? And he said, I want to see. Don't tell stories. I want a hundred million dollars. I want to get married 2024. Be specific. Determine what you want. Be specific. And you must be willing to pay the price. But what is so exciting about the price that we have to pay is that it's very cheap. Because the Bible says that Jesus paid the price for us. Hallelujah. It says that he was wounded for our transgressions. It says he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Everything that has taken your peace away up until now. Bible says that it was nailed on the cross with Jesus. Therefore, tonight you will not go back with it. In the name of Jesus. So the price is cheap. What is the price? For you to believe only. Believe only the word of God. What has God said concerning your situation? Believe. Hallelujah. And the third thing is to make a decision. Decide stubbornly that you're not going back the same. Decide. Be determined that I will not go back the same. Hallelujah. And the fourth thing is to say only what you want to say. Forget about the limitation. Forget about the issue. Forget about what has not worked up until now. Say what you want to see. Hallelujah. And the fifth thing is to rejoice in God. Amen. Rejoice in God. Hallelujah. Rejoice in God because joy is the atmosphere for miracles. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a scripture from Psalms 105 in verse 24. The Bible says, and God made them very fruitful. I declare in the name of Jesus that from today you become very fruitful. You'll be fruitful in your body. You'll be fruitful in business, fruitful in your career, fruitful in your words. In the name of Jesus, you'll be fruitful in your body. In the name of Jesus. He says, and they multiplied greatly. He says, God, them, God made them very fruitful and they multiplied incredibly until they became greater in number than those who ruled them. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will become greater than those who rule you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will greatly multiply you. He will answer the questions in your heart in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus this evening.